people. Yeah, we got a lot of people. I hey, know. guys. Hey, how are you? <laughs> We, uh, we got a big show today, product scams. Uh, we're going to take a look at whether you're getting what you pay for. The cosmetic cop, the cosmetics cop is here helping us put some high and low-end beauty products to the She's test. She's all business. She is, and it's amazing how much of a ripoff so many of these products are, and there are alternative products which are just as good, and the, you know they just don't I'm have really the fancy labels. I'm really interested because I've, I've become a drugstore diva. Have, in what way? Um, I just, I spend a lot of time at the drugstore. Really? <laughs> Not getting Loitering that. in the aisles, um, sort of? Yeah, uh -huh. I always tell my husband, if you can't find me, I'll be at Rite Aid. <laughs> is that right? I get all of my stuff. There, so I really have a lot of It seems like there's now a Rite Aid or a CVS or something on every single yeah. corner. When in I the... lived in New York, I was Dwayne Reed. Right, but yeah. But now yeah. I had to switch to Rite Aid because I'm in LA. Yeah. Anyway, uh, also Animal Planet's Gator Boys are here. They brought a bunch of live alligators. Crazy. Very crazy. And it is uh, Frugal Friday. We've got the number one secret of bargaining for you, but uh, a couple items in, in the news. Um, first of all, you uh, really only recently joined uh, the show in L.A. Good Day L.A. Good Day L.A., yeah, which is a, a great day. show, really fun show in L.A. It's a wonderful show. Yeah. It's an institution in Los It Angeles. is, yeah, yeah. To be a part of that is, I don't know how I put it. I've been on the show a number of times, and, and it, like, yeah, you, filled in you a never know times. what's going on. Like, there's a lot going on all the time. It's three hours live yeah. every day. We cover news, we cover sports, entertainment, I mean, whatever. But, and it's a lot of moving parts. But I saw a, a, an early clip of you working with Ryan Seacrest. When you, how old were you? When this you, is a little gem. This, you, we have this clip. I'm going to show you this. Wait, First of all, this is, look at this. Are you like nine years old I there? Was, you know, there are child I labor was, laws. I what? know. Look at that. <laughs> look at that oversized shirt I'm wearing. And what is going on with Ryan Seacrest? So there's His a whole, hair. the hair. It's and, like a whole pompadour And who's thing. the ghost in the back? There's like a, <laughs> like a. Oh my gosh, did you put that there? There's like a creepy ghost in I the back. I have looked at this picture for years, and You've I never, never noticed that. the ghost. But Thank where, you for what, pointing what that What show up. was this? Um, this was called Gladiators 2000. It was a kid's version of American Gladiators. I was 13 years old. I was seasoned at that time. Because so wait a minute. So the show American Gladiators, I remember people like doing all these yeah. competitions. So they had a children's version they of that? They did a kid's version. Oh, they didn't, yeah, like, sure. That's good for up. kids. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Get them dressed as gladiators fighting each other. But I think what's that's great good. is yeah. this was uh, Ryan's first gig. Was it really? He was 18. We yeah. have, we, let's play this clip. Oh, you've got the clip. Yeah, that's good. Hey, everybody. I'm Ryan Seacrest. And I'm Maria Sanso. And this is the place where kids from all over the country can come to play the same incredible games that they've seen on American Gladiators. <laughs> Welcome to Gladiators 2000. Um, wow. That's a lot of energy right there. Wait a second. Wait, what, Does that sound a little familiar to you? It sounds... American Gladiators. I know, right, yeah. training for it that. It did sound like he'd been, like, snorting Adderall, though. Like, he was, uh, like, American Gladiator. Uh, a lot of energy. A lot of energy. Um, I also sounded like a boy, so I, I'm happy that I grew into <laughs> How old the, were you, though? I was 13. 13 years old. Yeah, I was going through the change, I think. <laughs> you were going through the change. I don't know, I, I don't I know that Ryan like had gone through the clothes. change at that point yet, but... Uh, and he was huskier. He was, he was bigger than... There, yeah. I think we were both juicing. You're both juicing. Yeah. <laughs> is that right? Yeah, I think I say. so. You you look like a tiny, tiny kid. <laughs> I was. That is crazy. I was. And by then, I had I had started doing TV when I was 11 years old. I uh -huh. was a uh, kid sportscaster starting in Erie, Pennsylvania, where I grew up. Then I wound up uh, on ABC Sports. I was covering Little really? League World Series. I was a guest on The Tonight Show. Um, oh my God, that's you on The Tonight the Show. Time Wait I was a minute, on... look at your head compared to Jay Leno's head. <laughs> I mean, like, like he looks like he could swallow you whole. I know. We both kind of have the chin thing going, so. I yeah, but he like looks him. like he's about to open his mouth and just <laughs> go over your head like a like a crocodile. That is crazy. Um, Were that you very just, nervous? Uh, no, you know why? Huh? Because I didn't care. I was. Once... I would be like, I was be I prefer to be home playing Barbie. So I came out and I was like, hey. <laughs> and then Jay Leno says, um, oh, how did you get started doing this? And I go. Ugh. I tell this to a million people every day. I was really so annoyed funny. that he asked That's me that funny. question because everybody asked me that question. I was on the uh, Mike Douglas show when I was uh, about 10 years old. And because a friend of my mom's had a costumes from the Munchkins from the Wizard of Oz, so, like the original costumes. So he'd asked me to dress up as a Munchkin in one of the original a costumes. Munchkin. And I told my entire school I was going to be on the Mike Douglas show. The whole school tuned in and the segment got cut. Oh. And and so no one believed me that I was actually on it. Payback. Yeah, I know that's right. Okay. It's, yeah, I was later on. Um, do you remember um, to tell the truth that game show? Yes. Yeah, I played Wally not in the world's youngest bear trainer, and I had a big like Russian bear hat. And that wasn't true, right? No, I was not well, a Russian we were bear not trainer. The but truth. I got two votes: Nipsey Russell and Kitty Carlisle Hart. So you were a good got, little actor. I was. I was a good liar, and I won fifty dollars in Sarah Coventry jewelry. Yes. Oh. I know. Very. That was a prize. For, yeah, I know. Yeah, very exciting. 
so, you started out really young too. You I were, did, yeah, you yeah. You were a young teenager yeah. on Channel One. Now the other thing I hear about you, which I have a bone to pick, is that you wear flip flops everywhere. I know. Now I have a big thing about I know public you have displays a of feet. Problem. Yeah, but flip flops. I mean, do you wear them on the streets of the city? What would I? What would you say if I said I wore them on the airplane? Ugh. <laughs> I mean, I, seriously, when I see someone on an airplane coming on with flip flops. Because I know what's the, the problem. What, what's what's oh the need? god? Do I have to go through this what? again? I mean, I feel like I'm trying to look. This is the problem. This is how it ends up. People's naked feet Ooh. on aircraft. I took that picture. I the, usually do bring socks to. Put it's on. usually better with women's feet because, like you, you have painted toes. I mean, usually you have yes, nicer very little feet, feet and not like hairy hobbit feet like that man. I mean. I <laughs> Los Angeles, so everyone wears flops. I know, but there's dirt day, everywhere. Every so people wearing flip flops What's wrong on the street. In the streets of New York, so you would get dirt all over your feet, and then you flip them off in the airplane. And flips, and there's like. Ugh, like disgusting. That a flip with the rain. On the back Forget of your about calves. it. It drives me nuts. Yeah. You shouldn't do that. I, um, I love the flops. You're an adult. You should not be wearing slippers all day long. <laughs> uh, the other story. Wear them to work. I'm obsessed with this Manti Teo thing. I know people oh, maybe yeah. are sick of it, and I'm sort of sick of it. I'm sort of over it. I know, I know, I know. People I think are sick it's of it. It's a gift that keeps on giving. But it is crazy to me. I still don't understand this. You know, yesterday, the lawyer for this guy, Renaya Tuisa Sopo, or whatever his name is, Tuisa Sopo. Tuisa Sopo. Tuisa Sopo uh, claimed that it was Renaya pretending to be the girlfriend talking to Manti Teo, which makes no sense no. to me at all. No. I mean, there's no way a guy can pretend to be, a, a, you know, a, a woman's voice. For that long, talking hours right. on to the me, phone. To me, that was kind of always the missing link: was who was this woman he was speaking to on the phone? Right. And now, well, now, we right we now, it, the, according to the uh, the New York Post, uh, says that they have sources who say that it is a cousin of Renaya Tuisa Sopo's, and they have a picture of this woman. Um, yeah. Her name is Tino Tuisa Sopo. Uh, that's her her picture right there. So she came forward. Well, right. uh, it's, it was sources like tell, saying that they heard the voice, and, the, and other sources allegedly say it's this woman. I don't know. I don't that. really care, but I just find it so bizarre. It's and so bizarre. Um, when this first came out, I really thought that he was involved. I really did. And now, the more I hear from him and uh, his family, it seems like he, it was a total scam, and he just didn't get it. Although he definitely kind of misled reporters and For kind of played month. up this relationship yeah. more than it really was, saying right. she was the love of my life and all this stuff. But I mean, when she was dying, he never even considered going to visit her in the hospital. Even when they were in the same city, he was like, oh, I didn't want to miss my flight. Yeah. What? It's all very, it's all very screwy. That, yeah, like if this was a Lifetime movie, he would, you know, be by her bedside. He wouldn't be like, I gotta catch a flight. I'm not gonna, not gonna see her. I hate to break it to you, but life is not a Lifetime movie. Oh no, it is. Oh no, it is. <laughs> Um, oh, but it is. The other thing, as I was talking about sports, I saw a ad for, there was a Craigslist ad for a guy wanting to, uh, he had an extra ticket, I guess his girlfriend dumped him, uh -huh. and his uncle gave him to the tickets Super Bowl? to the Super Bowl. Ooh. So he put out an ad on Craigslist for, uh, to, get, uh, uh, to bring a woman to the Super Bowl game, but he has three requirements. Okay. Number one, you must be hot and a Ravens fan. Number two, you will be expected to put out. Yeah. And then he goes on to describe, which I won't even read the initials of what he's looking for, but he's looking for various things that have initials. Oh. And then number three, you will have to hang with my aunt and uncle for at least a little bit. <laughs> so you know, I'm not sure which is worse, the having to put out or having to hang with the aunt and uncle for a little bit. I have a lot of friends who meet these requirements and would put out, but the aunt and uncle thing, that's a deal that, breaker. That would be the deal breaker for that's them? That's a deal breaker. That right, really? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, he sounds like a really charming, uh, really charming honest. person. Well, that's true. Well, there's something to be said about just putting it all out there about what your expectations are. I guess. Right? I, yeah, I guess so. Good old I mean, Craig and his good, list. Good old Craig and his Always list, yeah. Always good for a laugh. The other thing is, um, are we, uh, do we have to take a break? We're good? Okay, so uh, a couple weeks Sorry. ago on the show, a couple weeks ago on the show, I talked about, I, I'd seen this woman uh, throwing out a banana peel into a mailbox, mm -hmm. and I got uh, incensed. You're like a vigilante. I, right, became a vigilante for, mm -hmm. for manners, <laughs> and I, I, I yelled at her, and I grabbed the banana peel, and I grabbed her yelled hand. Her? Yeah, I, nicely. I was like, you do not put a banana peel in a mailbox. <laughs> yeah, I got very upset. I got very self-righteous, yeah. And so I gra ended up grabbing the banana peel, and I grabbed her hand, and I put the banana peel in her hand. Anderson Cooper! I know, it was crazy. <laughs> and I marched her across the street where there was a, where there was a, uh, a waste paper basket, oh and I said, God. you put the, the banana peel there. Okay, so one of our viewers, I guess, 
was was uh, inspired by this and he sent us an email saying coming off the beach a vehicle in front of me threw litter out the window appalled i blinked my lights picked up the litter followed them pulled the uh, the person pulled into their driveway and ducked down i pulled up in their driveway threw the litter in their driveway and drove away i felt so empowered wow yeah. but i just want to say which is a nice yeah but no one likes the litter bug no one likes the litter bug but now I am worried that I am going to be legally liable yeah. for somebody getting hurt, like being a litter vigilante. So I am not, I just, I just feel as a disclaimer for my own protection legally, yeah. I should just point out, I am not encouraging other people to be litter vigilantes <laughs> or to stop people on the street who have thrown cigarette butts on the street or whatever. I, I, I just, I take no responsibility. Someone so, could get hurt in this Someone madness. could get hurt, yes. Yeah. Someone could very easily get like hurt. Like as you were marching that lady across the I street. I only went up to the lady because A, she was a little lady, <laughs> and I felt fully confident she could not beat me up. You gotta be careful with right. a little lady. If it was a big guy, I don't think I would have been like, here's the banana peel, <laughs> you know? I think I would have... Yeah, would have been just like, hey, you can put the banana peel in the mailbox, that's fine. Uh, His voice got really high. <laughs> yes, my voice gets high when I get get it nervous. It's like Anderson when I, for mayor. It's, for mayor? No, I would not be a good yeah, mayor of this city. You could be the city. mayor. Yeah, oh, yeah. could be a good mayor. No, I don't think so. No. Mayor. Uh, listen, we do have to take a quick break. We'll have more of the first 15 when we come back. We'll continue the story of some hijinks in the police station you never believed who broke into an evidence uh, room and got high on marijuana. We'll be right back. Ooh. Sansone from Good Day LA. Uh, or do you feel it's it's freezing here in New York? It's Are you freaking. freaked out? It kind of felt good though to yeah. get off the plane and get hit with that cold air. I was like, oh, I'm home. I was in LA like two weeks ago for a charity event, and um, everyone, it was like their minds were flipping out because it was, it cold. was it was cold. It was like 49 degrees, and they, I mean, it was like. It was like they thought it was the North Pole. Yeah, I mean, I it's all wear, people talked about. I had to wear a coat. I know. I feel for you. I, I really feel for you. And I had you. to retire my flip flops. <laughs> yeah, do, oh, right, good. It was upwards of 50 degrees in some places. Oh my gosh. Wow. 50 <laughs> degrees. I don't know how you all coped. Amazing. You all should get a medal. We flipped out. Yeah. It, it, every, it's all people would talk about in LA. Yeah. I was like, people, it's 50 degrees. I know. Anyway. I know. So um, we've talked about this a lot on the show, and, and um, we had a, one of our co-host the other day said that I needed Botox, which I, I, was, I was surprised that she would actually say it to my face. Right. And, and I think I was able to register surprise because I haven't had Botox. Right. Um, and, and of course, Terrence over there was a blank slate because he is so Botoxed right. that he, he could not express any emotion whatsoever. He's into the talk. He's, oh yeah, he's mad right now, but you would never know because no. it is a, I mean, it's clear this as a my, pond. This is my quitting. Yeah, that's the <laughs> mad face. So anyway, okay. apparently last weekend, Terrence needed a little pick-me-up, and... Uh, I tried to get you to come with me. Yeah, there's no way. Not gonna happen. Yeah, first of all, I wouldn't hang out with Terrence so on the weekend. Really and <laughs> Again, he's Whoa. mad, but you never know it. That's the nice thing. You can insult Terrence as much as you want, and you will never know the impact it has on him because everything is so Botox. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. Anyway. Yeah, I, I, I went last weekend. Yeah. You would not come with me because you're so busy um, <laughs> doing what I don't know, not uh -huh. talking to people. And um, so I sort of brought you with me. So oh, really? can we watch? Okay, yes. He, all right. he so made what, a little story all about right, his we're trip watch. to the Botox doctor. Dr. Colbert, I'm so happy. No, no I want a hug. You know nothing makes me happier on a Saturday than to see you. All right, are you ready? I'm so ready. We're gonna start real easily. Beauty is pain. Quite frankly, I'm really sick of Anderson making fun of me, and I tried to get him to come here. Okay. I asked him, he says he's too busy, and so I brought him with me today. I'm hoping that you can help him. I think I can. I'm very tired from doing 360 in my talk show. One there, there. Seems like a lot of Sharpie marking going on. That will give you a look of complete relaxation no matter what's happening in the world. Oh. 
Look at how much work you need. <laughs> You've circled this area. Hoda and Kathy Lee call this eye cleavage. Is that medical? I feel like honesty is important, don't you? I agree, Terrence. He doesn't want to say what he really wants to say, but what he told me off camera was that you need to get in here. <laughs> so. Eek. Okay. Would you ever do it? I, I, I have never I done it. I just want to no. give you this. I mean, no, I don't, I don't, I think it's fine to have wrinkles. I think people are supposed to have wrinkles and I, think I don't it, think, it, you know, I think it's, uh, it looks that's really depressing it. though. But okay, well, I just have a couple things. First of all, who hugs their doctor? <laughs> and I screams. mean, and screams. Wait, isn't Colbert, like the Colbert yeah, like, like the Colbert. Seriously, do you hug all the, your doctors? I hug everybody. Oh Lord. <laughs> I, let me just tell you right you, now. We would have had so much fun. Sh he should have come with I'm me, just right? Doing, let me just tell you right now, your doctor does not want to be hugged by you. That's the last <laughs> thing your doctor wants in the world. Um, your doctor's mad, too. You just can't tell. Right, right. <laughs> but no, but I'm fine. I think it's totally fine to have wrinkles and lines. And I mean, I do think there's a complete double standard because women, you know, aren't, ex aren't you know, there's a different expectation for women, which I think is completely unfair. Mm, it is. I think it's nice to, to show some I age. I didn't and, know this was called eye cleavage. Well, yeah, I, I've had this since I was I think 10. It's happening. Really? I think I'm starting to get the eye. Cleavage. No, you, no, you. I got haven't nothing. done the Botox, yeah. although I live in LA, and I'm on TV in LA. They give it so... away at, at Mickey D's in LA. Uh, <laughs> it's I'm pretty it's sure. So, yeah, Drive it's so everywhere. Shoot you up with the tox. Sure, <laughs> shoot you up with the tox. Well, listen, Dr. Colbert, who I hug, uh -huh. has a great product you know. line, Colbert MD, and sent product for everybody in the audience. Oh, really? Oh. Everybody oh. But it, this is Tara, how America feels. That you're the punching uh, bag? That one says you look amazing. Yeah, Just well. That that's one. my husband. Yeah, <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, I just don't see the, I mean, you know, I, I don't know, maybe, I guess never say never, but I, I have no desire to get both. Well, you're all expression. TV is so much this that if uh, you lost that, that would be terrible. And I just think it's, know I just think, like some, you know, I think there's some people look, it looks weird like when your ears meet in the back. Like, right. you know, it's not supposed to be that Different. way. It's yeah. odd. You're not supposed to be able to bounce a quarter off the, off your head, you know? It gets to a point where everyone starts to look the same. Everybody starts to look exactly yeah. the same, yeah, which I think like is the, people. yeah, we all look like robot people. Yeah. So, I, the, you know, I've never understood why some things become fashionable and others don't. And we put some of the kind of weird fashions we've seen over the last year on the show. We just came across this scarf that looks like bacon. And this is, this is the picture of it. We actually sent away for it. It's $170. This is it. It's available at natalieluter.ch. Okay. I don't, I don't know. know if I'm horrified or hungry. Would you? Uh, do you want to try that on? Yeah, let me put this on. You know who would love this? Who would? What, what? My husband. Your husband? Well, I yeah. always tell him for a holiday I should make him a bacon belt with like sausages hanging off of it. That would be like <laughs> uh, the perfect gift for him. What do you think? If I went on the streets of New York in this, the men would be after me. <laughs> and the dogs. <laughs> and the dogs, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. This is hideous. It's kind of. It doesn't really. Yeah. I don't. Would anybody here wear that? Anyone? Yo, really? A bunch of people would. You'd, oh, all right. Should we give it? What? Wow, that really. All right, you can. You can. It's yours. If, all right. If, if you want it, you can have it. Uh, um, you get a bacon scarf. You get a bacon scarf. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, we only have one bacon scarf, not for everybody. Um, Am I allowed to give stuff away? I just also, a, a funny store. story, um, police in, um, where is it, this, in Wichita noticed that somebody was breaking into, uh, their in their evidence room, somebody was getting into bags of marijuana in the evidence room, and they realized that it was mice, uh, that they have a mice problem who were getting into it and eating the marijuana. And this yeah, is, they were. And, but, but yeah, and, and the, the police officer said that uh, we've got some mice that are stoners. But you know, what's actually funny, that, that's, uh, that's the Lieutenant Doug Nolte, not a stoner. That's uh, one of the lieutenants who said that. I guess that's why. Then they broke into the Cheetos factory and <laughs> ate all the right, Cheetos. Exactly. <laughs> but it's funny, actually, I was in a police evidence room uh, doing a story like 20 years ago, and they also had a mice problem. And the guy who worked, I won't say where it was, but the guy who worked in the evidence room 
I guess because he works in the evidence room with so much marijuana around, uh -huh. he, he always fails drug tests because, because it, this, so it just sad. seeps into your skin, so he can never pass a drug test. Uh -huh. Anyway, I he, swear, officer. I know, that's right. <laughs> it just but, soaked into my so skin. So they were saying they had a mice problem, and I noticed they had put up all these pictures of cats all around, <laughs> and I was no. like, dude, are you stoned? That's not gonna <laughs> stop a mouse. Like, a picture of a cat doesn't... Dude, are you stoned? It seemed like, seemed like such a stoner idea. Like, we'll put a picture we'll of a cat cats, up. Man. Right, exactly. We'll put, like, a picture of cheese outside. It'll be fine. <laughs> right, exactly. All right, we're gonna take another quick break. Um, or we're, when we come back, are you paying more than you should for your favorite beauty products? We'll put something to the test. We'll be right back. All right.